Professional sports do not stop for anyone. The shelf life of an athlete's career differs. Some might make it for a few years in the league, others for over a decade. Either way, it is always strange to see exceptional talents just abruptly vanish, and that was no different for former Australian representative Blake Ferguson, who went from one of the blockbuster names in the sport to out of the NRL in quick time. Let's look back at what he achieved in the sport, and what has now happened in the curious case of Blake Ferguson. Blake started his career over at the Cronulla Sharks, and made his mark early, scoring 9 tries in his rookie year. Finishing runner-up for the Dally M Rookie of the Year award, he moved around throughout his career with a two-year stint with the Canberra Raiders, shortly after this leading the team in tries and debuting for the New South Wales Blues, where he would excel in the state of origin level at just 23, before he would get caught up in controversy. Numerous alcohol-related offences like missing a recovery session drinking, an indecent assault charge and disciplinary issues in the origin camp led to the loss of his Canberra contract and a one-year suspension from the NRL. Ferguson was performing well on the field with barnstorming carries from the back and a great finishing ability, but unfortunately due to his off-field actions, he stood looking down the barrel of his career ending. After his suspension's conclusion in 2015, Ferguson would rejoin the NRL, this time with the Sydney Roosters. Arguably his most successful tenure as a footballer, Ferguson would get his career back on track featuring for both New South Wales and Australia whilst at the Roosters. Fergo was not one for consistency throughout his career, but he was capable of the truly special on any occasion, whether it was the tiptoeing down the sidelines in the final seconds to set up the state of origin deciding game winner, or his spectacular try celebrations Fergo entertained throughout his career. Following the 2018 season, where he would win a premiership with the Sydney Roosters and amass 50 tries in his 90 games with the Roosters, he would move on to the Parramatta Eels and continue to impress. Scoring at an effective rate and continuing to carry the ball hard, Ferguson was an asset for the Eels, especially in the first two years with the club. He would see a form dip in 2021, which would force him out of the side and into the New South Wales Cup, but would return later in the year for Parramatta as they fell to the Penrith Panthers in the elimination final. Ferguson to this point had had an excellent career. Where many other wingers find themselves out of the league within a few seasons, Ferguson had remained one of the premier wingers for over a decade and played at the game's highest level. Just removed from one of the blockbuster games of the season between Penrith and Parramatta, Ferguson kind of vanished. It was well publicised he would be released from his contract with the Parramatta Eels, but it was expected that he would be swiftly picked up by a rival club. Ferguson had now gone a while without any off-field incidents and his second half of the year resurgence should have ensured another NRL team would come knocking on his door. But no one did. This meant Ferguson would look elsewhere and he would switch codes, signing for the NEC Green Rockets in Japan, the premier rugby union competition. On the 26th of October, he would sign a $1.5 million deal over two seasons, a bigger payday than Ferguson would ever receive over a two-year period in the NRL. This is a great opportunity for the 32-year-old to really cash in on his spectacular career. Unfortunately, two months into his rugby union career, he would make a silly mistake. In the Roppongi district in Tokyo, Ferguson would be charged for drug possession and assault, an incident he was remorseful and took full responsibility for. He would spend 30 days in Japanese jail on a mattress about a centimetre thick and saw his contract torn up. Ferguson was now without a side and a contract with his rugby union dreams gone and the ill discipline off the field that seemed like a distant memory showing up again. Ferguson would return to rugby league once he returned to Australia, but it was not in the NRL. It was far from it actually, as he featured for the Thirlmere Roosters in the Group 6 competition alongside Curtis Scott and against the likes of former kangaroo Tony Williams. A rumoured return to the NRL was scheduled with the Newcastle Knights, but this would never materialise. Ferguson would continue to apply his trade for Thirlmere before a move to England became likely. Contacted by former Maroon Adrian Lamb, Blake Ferguson would be offered a half-season deal with the Lee Centurions in the English second division of Rugby League. In what was really a lifeline, Ferguson would take the opportunity and head straight over to England, linking up with former NRL stars Kristen Inu, Caleb Aikens, John Asiata and Nene McDonald. Ferguson's debut was a success as he scored four tries in a massive 58-6 win as he sits now second on the table as they hope for promotion to the Super League. All in all, Ferguson's last year has been a whirlwind. From being demoted to the New South Wales Cup and then finding his form and starring for the Eels towards the back end of 2021, then signing a dream rugby union deal to spending 30 days in a Japanese prison, returning home and now starring in England. It's been an eventful time for sure for Ferguson, and he's hoping that the former Kangaroo star can make a comeback and possibly return to the NRL in the near future.
Okay, so that concludes this video on where Blake Ferguson is. I love doing these little deep dives into stories, so expect more to come. If you have your own suggestions on NRL players or any other Australian athletes, tell me in the comments down below. For more Australian sports lists and mini documentaries, subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you as always for watching.